So take a look uh, on these chapters, okay, feasibility analysis. So there are 10 objectives that you're going uh, to look under this feasibility analysis. So first, you have to understand what is actually feasibility analysis and why it's so important, which I already described it earlier uh, before uh, showing this slide. And then uh, I already mentioned uh, the proper time okay, to conduct the feasibility uh, analysis. Right, and under the feasibility analysis, when you are running or you are testing uh, the ideas or the opportunity that you already identify, there are four components that you must really look at. Only four components. So they are starting from the product or the service feasibility analysis, and then the industries uh, and target market uh, feasibility analysis. Number three, you have to take a look on your startup or your company, which is organizational feasibility analysis. And then the final one is the financial feasibility analysis. So under each component, uh, there will be like side sub component that you need to look at, right? And then you need to consider uh, whether you can perform it or not. So uh, of course, uh, when you are running the feasibility analysis, you have to make sure all four components work fine, right? So I will uh, resume it later, okay? I just give you some um, briefly explanation on the component first. So take a look uh, apart then um, the third uh, objective, describe the product feasibility analysis. Uh, there are two issues that you need to look at. So first, is the desirability of product or service. And secondly, the issue that you need to look at whether there's a demand towards the product or service. So under the product feasibility or service feasibility analysis, so you will be seeing um, the concept statement, the usability testing, right? Uh, and then uh, you will also uh, look on the buy intention survey, Okay, secondary uh, research, internet libraries research, all right, and gum, also gumshoe research as well. That I will explain later. No worry on that, all right. Uh, number seven, uh, we take a look at the second component of feasibility analysis, whereby you need to identify the industry's uh, attractiveness. So there are certain characteristics of uh, industry's attractiveness, attractiveness that you need to look at. Right, so I will explain to you how are you going to assess this uh, attractiveness. So in your note, it already like stated the list of our uh, industry's attractiveness. But how are you going to know that the 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 list is attractive towards your business or towards your chosen company in your assignment? So that's why uh we're going to learn. Uh, the next week of uh, the industries analysis because in industries analysis we are going to identify the potential profit and also the potential threat uh the industries that you're going to engage or to enter don't worry i will explain a little bit on the industries later same goes as the target market attractiveness so when you are already identified the specific group that you want to appeal or you want to make sure they will buy or use your product. So you need to look on its attractiveness okay, as well. Because even though you already like specified or identify the group, but if the target market is not attractive, so there will be like some issues towards your profitability and also towards your operation uh, as well. All right. So I hope you clear uh, on that in the first place. All right, uh, and then we will take a look on the organizational feasibility analysis where you need to assess uh, the companies that you build or the companies that you are going to advise or to propose on the solution, let's say in your assignments. So there are two things that you need to look at, their capability and also the resources uh, they have. So the resources here, okay, we are emphasizing of non-financial resources that can bring them to the competitive uh, advantage. So why we are not talking on the financial under the organizational feasibility analysis? Is it because it's not important? No, because why? Because the last one, we're going to have our own financial feasibility component itself. 
So under the financial feasibility, so there are three things that you need to look at. So first thing is how much actually that you are required to build out your business or perhaps in your assignments, the chosen company, how much it requires for you to uh, to to make sure the pro the proposed solution uh, works, right? So how much cost required? And then you have to take a look uh the similarity of fun uh, of the uh, similarity of the financial performance of similar business or perhaps the competitors that doing the same thing with you so you have to know their financial performance uh, as well because that will be your benchmark or guideline for you to do your operations right uh number three uh you have to look overall financial attractiveness such as um uh, how much profit that you're going to have uh how can you uh predict or forecast uh for uh for your sales right for at least three years five years eight years right or any years okay perhaps and how can you exit from the ventures okay if any so we will take a look uh in detail right after this all right so I hope okay, you clear uh, the objective that we're going to learn today. So first thing, you look on the four components. Okay, you have to know all the four components, right? So whenever you do your assignments, make sure you include all these four components. Otherwise, you cannot like proceed with the second round. If you proceed with the second round, so usually you will face a more issue or more obstacle. All right. So uh before i go much further so maybe this is a riddle maybe that you can solve so if you have the answers uh please leave uh in the chat box yeah all right so maybe like this one uh when i was two years old my sister was half of my age now i'm 100 years old how old is my sister uh so last time i had students okay not students students Hello, sir yes uh sir yes. my friend can't join the meeting uh. Yeah, screen uh, keeps showing asking to join. Uh keep showing to join. Okay, just wait a while. <laughs> okay, 99, thank you. Okay, now can already. Okay, so already can, right? All right. Uh, so, uh, Winnie, okay, you managed to get the answers because last time during my physical, uh, class, uh, the student, uh, confidently <laughs> answers, uh, 50. Okay. So there's nothing wrong, okay, with the confidence, but of course, uh, you need to be careful, uh, when, uh, answering, uh, the question. So maybe you remember when I taught you, uh, in the second chapters under the creativity right there are five steps remember uh preparation incubation then you manage to get your answers okay the insight all right so once you get the answers you cannot like straight away elaborate it so you have to uh evaluate it instead of elaborate it. so once you already evaluate it then you get the answers then you can elaborate okay write your your answers okay so thank you uh for the answers all right so it means that you are alert okay uh in this class so i just i just testing you lah okay you guys okay actually so whether you are uh, focusing uh or otherwise all right okay so now uh take a look uh uh what is feasibility analysis so for your information uh feasibility analysis is the evaluation or the assessments Okay, so from what you have identified as opportunity and also the ideas, all right? So remember when we learn on the recognizing opportunity and ideas, so you need to make sure whether it can be done or not because everyone can identify the opportunity, everyone can uh, generate the ideas, but somehow you have to make sure whether the ideas that you plan to do works or not, all right? So that's why okay, you need to run uh, the feasibility analysis or the test run. Okay, some people say test run first means that touch the surface in the first place. So the reason that I mentioned to you why you need to run it in the first place because you do not want to waste a lot of your resources. So why I say that 
you have to understand whenever you are startup company so what is your limitation here maybe you can remember what is your limitation so your actually your limitation is mostly on the resources all right uh, even the largest company they also have limited uh, limited limitation of resources imagine if you are a startup company so of course lots of resources that you are lacking such as capital right manpowers even the knowledge right the support and many others so imagine if you are not investigating it in the first place so what will happen so there will be a lots of issues or obstacles or problem that you're going to face later right so please don't get don't get me wrong okay so whenever you run the feasibility analysis so some people say uh might be thinking that uh whenever you go to the next round you won't face any difficulty or any problem or any issue uh that actually wrong wrong concept so whatever we do actually in life whenever we manage to um overcome the obstacle in the first place it doesn't mean the next round that you are going to do that you will not face any difficulty or challenges all right so you have to understand uh, the, the concept all right so the concept whenever you go for the next round okay means that you will uh, face less obstacle less challenges because why because you already managed to overcome the first round so imagine if you can't uh, manage the first round and then you want to go to the second round so of course there will be a lot of issue and problem Okay, right after that so it's just like when you are doing your your assignment so you have to do a stage by stage so you cannot like skip everything okay and then like uh, try to put it as a, a jigsaw okay puzzle okay uh in the end because you cannot do that uh basically ask your team member do this do this part only and they do the other part okay and then without discussing each other right so that's why uh you need uh to make sure that you run it uh, in the first place okay so now take a look okay so this one i already like mentioned the timing to run the feasibility analysis so these are the four components that i mentioned you uh, earlier so uh whenever you watch the let's say the tv shows right so like american got talent british got talent uh, or american idol or any like reality television show where they have like judges okay and so on so let's say they have like five of uh, four judges or three judges okay perhaps so let's say like three judges or two judges out of three uh judges uh like your performance so you might go to the second round right the second round uh same goes like american idol american got got talent or whatsoever uh television show but unlike the feasibility analysis so like it or not so you have to ensure all these four component from the product from the industries market organizational and also financial feasibility work fine means that you have four yeses right american idol two yeses go to the next round American got talent three S's out of four you still go to the second round so for feasibility analysis so let's say if one of the four components okay not work fine so you have to drop or rethink the business idea so you have to look back the proposed uh, solution or whatsoever the opportunity or idea that you up to is there any like uh like uh downfall or is there any like um uh, uh, mistake uh, through the identification uh, of the opportunities okay uh, and other issues okay as well so once you already overcome this in the first place so you may proceed with the second round so the second round okay, it doesn't mean you have to proceed with the business plan but somehow you may uh, uh, go in depth on the other uh, analysis such as uh, the industries analysis and also the competitors uh, analysis and then from that analysis you can translate it to your business model that we're going to learn in chapter uh, six All right very clear right so far so please uh, digest this four component okay remember product service industry target market uh, organizations and also financial feasibility and also you have to take a look at its sub-component under each component 
All right. So under the product or service feasibility analysis, two things that you need to look at. The desirability of product or service and the demand of the product or service. Under the industry's target market feasibility analysis, the attractiveness of industries and also the attractiveness of target market as well. So under the organizational feasibility analysis, so you have to take a look on the management capability or management prowess and also the resources that uh, the companies or your startup or the, uh, or the chosen company that are currently have. Okay, so whenever you have these resources, so it, it eventually might lead to the competitive advantage. Why? Because some of the companies or competitors may not have what you post poses okay, right now. So it means that they will be advantage to you, right? Uh, so we will discuss okay much detail later under the resource sufficiency. And last but not least, under the financial feasibility analysis so whereby you have to consider how, of how much that you're going to start okay your ventures or how much that you're going uh, to have for the proposed solution for the chosen company number two the similarity of uh, the financial performance of similar business or your competitors so why why i say similar business and competitors because sometimes the similar businesses might not be your competitors even though they are doing the same thing because why because maybe the location of their business operation uh is not um threatening you right somehow just like restaurant right so you are selling dim sum in kampa but uh there's a restaurant uh, selling dim sum also in ipo so it won't be your your direct competitors all right maybe indirect yes maybe but somehow we can consider that it won't be your competitors after all. But of course, they are doing almost similar things. So you need to look at their performance as well because you need to have like certain benchmark of how to go about. It's just like when you are doing FYP of if you are doing your assignments, okay, like this. So some of you already like approach me, sir, can I take a look like previous assignment, how they do? The reason why you ask me this because you want to look the benchmark. So how are you going to improve it in the future of how are you going to make it um, better uh, compared to the previous uh, assignment, right? But somehow I, I won't let you to look at the previous assignments because I do not know because uh, in the end, I can see uh, it's not the improvement, but somehow it just, I don't say you copy, but somehow uh, you just follow accordingly what uh, the previous assignment uh, was done. So when I ask, okay, why you do this? The previous assignment okay, uh, done like this, so I do like this. <laughs> so that's why okay, I don't want uh, to let uh, you look at it because otherwise you will like try to uh, follow uh, what uh, is already been done uh, earlier, right? Because somehow you have to understand that maybe that time, Okay, when you are when the students do, so maybe that uh, was the best uh, writing, but maybe uh, along the way, so maybe that writing will was not um, the best writing after all. So time change uh, for your uh, information. All right, so that's why okay, uh, I don't uh, share. I encourage to share uh, either the FYP or the the assignment. So let you know the format in the first place so you guys can do on your own and consult uh, the lecturers uh, from time to time. Right? So I hope okay, you clear uh, on that, on the financial performance of similar business. And of course, the overall financial attractiveness of the proposed venture or from the chosen uh, company as well. Okay. Okay, so we'll take a look on the first uh, component. Right, so uh, I just want to emphasize here. So in this slide, uh, it shows uh, product or service feasibility analysis. So uh, why they put two, right? Because uh, it, the explanation is more on the theoretical. So they don't, don't have uh, things to, to show. So let's say if you are doing uh, the, your assignment. So if they are selling uh, physical items, so you do not need to include the service feasibility analysis because why? Because you're not the your the company that you choose 
are not is not um, offering the service so like i said just now you are uh, selling items physical items so you have to emphasize on the product feasibility analysis so if the chosen company uh, does not offer a physical product they just offer on the service so uh, of course you need to emphasize on the feasibility uh, on the service feasibility analysis because there's no uh, product that been offered okay, to the customer so you have to look the chosen company that that you choose and also uh when you are doing the business as well in the future so you have to look what kind of thing that you're going to offer is it the physical product or is it intangible uh product right so again uh what is the product or service feasibility analysis again is the assessment evaluation remember four components all of them are the assessment or the evaluation whether uh, it's worthwhile to pursue or not whether it's workable uh, or not all right so take a look um these two sub component under the product or service feasibility uh, analysis all right so the first one is desirability the second one is demand so i believe that uh, most of you somehow uh, get confused a bit right the desirability and the demand because it almost look the same right desire and also demand right but somehow uh, it has a slightly different on the desirability and demand so let me brief you so that you will clearly understand on it so i believe that most of you get confused effective efficiency uh, anti-social a social and few other words that has almost the similarity um uh, sound okay and sometimes uh you feel that it has the same meaning but in the end it's slightly different so desirability is actually the needs and want so it's just like when you are looking the the product or the service or anything that you have the feeling of want it right the feeling of want it the desire to to need it Okay, so you really like it. But does it mean that you going to buy it? Either yes or no. So that's why under the product demand, so we are looking on the willingness of the customer to buy it or not. So maybe the customer look at it, oh, very nice. I think I want to have it. But will you buy it? So that's why okay, we need to test on the product demand or service demand so i hope okay, you clear uh this uh concept because i can see lots of students getting confused on these two even though it looks simple right so i hope okay, you have a better understanding on desirability and also demand right so under the product desirability so first of all when you run this desirability to, to know whether people really want it have the desire to to have it so you have to ask the questions the basic question or not the basic lah. so actually a lot of questions that you need to ask within your team members or within yourself so just like whether the product making sense is it reasonable so whenever you have these solutions or proposed ideas so do you think the customers will get excited about it will have uh eager to know about it right we can pull the customers in will attract the customers in or not so you have to ask yourself so that's why whenever last time whenever the student came to me right whenever they give me the ideas and solutions uh, for every issues so when i ask back when i ask them back do you really want to have this uh do you want to buy this product but uh ironically <laughs> uh, the students say uh, i think i don't want to have this product or offering then why you offer this in the first place why you give the solution in the first place because you also do not want to get this product you also do not want to have this product so why you think the customers want this product uh you see so that's why uh you need to make sure uh that uh not only uh the customers okay it's not the customer itself but also you have to put yourself as your as the customers 
Because why? Because you need to know the pain and gains of every of your customers. So you cannot like simply offer uh, to the marketplace. Then you say this is solution that the customers really like excited at. Because you also as a customer, you also do not want. Okay, so you have to know the pain and gains of every uh, customer. Right, and then uh, you have to look also uh, whether you can take advantage towards the uh, the environmental trend. All right, so environmental trend. Okay, uh, like uh, uh, remember in chapter two what we have learned on the economic forces. Right, economic forces. What we learn: disposable income, spending pattern, and what else? Okay, spending pattern, disposable income, uh, state of economy. Right, and then uh, the social forces. Uh, the thing that related with the society, with the people, and it will affect uh, the culture, the norm, the behaviors of the group, okay, and so on. Okay, and then we have to take a look also on the technological advancement, right? So whether you can take advantage through uh, whenever the technological advancement okay, is having, right? Sorry. And then uh, on the political and regulatory changes uh, as well. And are you trying to solve a problem right, somehow? So is it solving the problem to the customers or not? Or is it you just show uh, You have to ask that. And also, is there any the gap in the marketplace? So just like uh, Chinese um, food uh, that I mentioned last week, and then you want to offer halal uh, Chinese food. Right, so is it uh filling the gap? So let's say like some of the Chinese food, uh maybe like um I do not know like like certain uh Chinese food that uh that that much uh that how to say that that uh is like alien uh to uh others than Chinese, maybe like Malay or others, right? Somehow, uh even though you make it halal, right? So you have to understand because like uh everyone of us right whether you malay chinese or indian so if you see something that really new you will find it very strange right somehow very strange so it doesn't mean even though it's new uh you want to get make the gap it, it doesn't mean that it will uh, create the opportunity it will create a, a, a new market okay for you uh, so you have to understand uh that as well, even though you are actually filling gaps in the marketplace, but it doesn't mean that this kind of thing be accepted, right? So how are you going to do that? So that's why we're going to learn in chapter um, 11 under the marketing uh, issues, right? So I hope okay, you're clear uh, on this okay, second part. And then is it timely, whether the window of opportunity for the product or the service is there? And then you also have, you also need to, question whenever you do this what chances of uh, failing or failure right so you cannot like all the time uh, say be 100 percent optimistic so you have to have the calculated risk so whenever we do the business uh maybe we i already like emphasized uh in the first class uh that you have uh to be tolerance of what of ambiguity of uncertainty so maybe 90 percent uh, of business will be success and 10%, the remaining 10% will be failure. So 10% failure, so you need to say or justify. So why it, it will fail? Why this 10% will fail? So you have to list down uh, all these things. And of course, whenever you have these all these questions, so this is a, um, a few questions that you can ask. So you can ask more until you satisfy your team members and also yourself. So if you're still not satisfied with all these questions, so you have to question again and again and again until everyone is satisfied. Because remember, feasibility analysis is the primary round. You have to make sure everything works fine in the first place, right? So uh, whenever you have these favorable answers, right? So then you need to run what? The concept test or uh, concept statement uh, testing okay so take a look uh this one secondly to conduct or administer a concept test so what is actually a concept test so concept test okay will be run 
or will be conducted right after you manage to get the favorable answers from the uh, first part just now. So it's actually a, a one page uh, description, uh, one page description about what you're going to do, and you will give this concept statement to uh, respondent or to the uh, to the uh, respondent, uh, and then you need to get their response and their feedback. So you have to understand that we are not conducting an uh, in-depth uh, survey yet, right? Remember, feasibility analysis is the testing the surface. So you are actually giving about like 10 up to 20 uh, participants or respondents in order for you to get the feedback. So whenever you give this to these respondents, so you have to make sure that you are not giving to the uh, close members. Means that you're not giving to your relatives, uh, your your family members, right? Uh, who else? Uh, your close friend or anything, uh, anyone that close to you. So the reason why you are doing this because you are giving about like 10 to 20 um, concept tests. But whenever you have the close um, members, right? Family members, relative friends and, and others. So usually you will get a bias. What? Bias. Uh, feedback or outcome. So let's say if you're giving to your your sister, your brothers, or your relative or your friend, so usually whenever you ask for the feedback, the re recommendation or comment, so everything they say, oh, I think that one is okay, good, fine. So what does it mean by good, fine? So it's very common, it's very general, and then you already like feel happy because uh, you get the favorable uh, answers on that. So that's why whenever you run later on you will face more obstacle or more uh, or failure right so that's why you have to give like person maybe like you are doing this and then you show it to me so i can give a lots of comment and feedback okay as well so remember it's one page description so it, it being uh written briefly and it consists of five component right again i would like to emphasize uh, during the midterm or final examination uh, last time, whenever I asked five components uh, under the concept statement, so the student uh, uh, not happy with me. Because why? Because they mentioned that I, I tricked them. So I didn't trick you guys. So I thought I taught uh, you guys in the class. I mentioned to them. But somehow the student uh, misunderstood the question. So... Yes, uh, the feasibility analysis, we have four components. The student uh, questioned me during the examination, the physical examination last time. So you taught us feasibility got four components, but why you ask five components? Okay, and then I said, okay, please read the question properly. So in the end, the student uh, couldn't recall what uh, uh, they had been taught, right, somehow. So they just memorized all the four components, but they didn't um, uh, recall on the sub-component. So that's why okay, you have to look all these components. So I'm just asking you the five components under the concept statement. It's not four components on the feasibility analysis. So some students, uh, they answer all four components, but not giving any five components in the uh, concept statement. So uh, many marks gone. Lah. Okay, 10 marks up to 15 marks are gone. So I'm just asking okay, partial part of the feasibility analysis so which is the uh the concept statement component not all the four component of feasibility uh, analysis so what are the five component under the concept test so take a look uh on these uh, five component Okay, so before we go to the five component, uh, so you may take a look the reason why we need to have this concept uh, statement. So the reason, there are three reasons uh, to have this uh, concept statement. So first, to validate uh, your presence, whether your product or your service idea. So you want to validate to make sure uh, you existed to the audience. And then like to make sure they realize, oh, you might have this uh, offering, all right? And then, uh, even though you already developed the ideas or generating the ideas from your, your opportunity, so whenever you come up with the concept uh, test or concept statement, so eventually you get the feedback. So when you get the feedback, 
somehow it helped you to develop a much better idea. So the reason you have to understand the concept test, you haven't launched the product yet. So you just have the ideas. So you haven't executed yet. So because you want to make sure it works or not. So that's why you have to test in the first place. It's just like a draft, right? So when you have like this A product, okay, and then like whenever the responder like respond uh, to you and then like maybe like uh, say, okay, uh, a lot, uh, this kind of improvement is needed and required. So you have the ideas how to, how to modify it, how to make it better. So that's why it helped to develop a uh, better idea or more ideas. And for your information, it also helped you to estimate sale or to forecast sale. So let's say if the first time people look at this, uh, your, your, your product or your concept statement, for instance. So eventually it will help you to, to estimate your sale okay, as well. So for instance, let's say if the first impression where the responder look not happy, so you know already, so uh, it won't be like so success. But let's say if you see the, the, the light, okay, of the brightness, okay, of the responder to see uh, your uh, prototype, for instance, or your concept or whatsoever, your explanation. So from that, you can roughly estimate they will be okay, good sales uh, from that particular product or surface. Right, so I hope okay, you're clear on the reason why we need to have this uh, concept uh, statement. Right, so uh, so let let's take a look uh, on these uh, five components first. So maybe like in this uh, example, they show you the the fitness trick. So maybe I give you another example, uh, Okay, so of course uh, you need to have the title. Right, so maybe your companies perhaps. So let's say um, we talk about like shoes, for instance. So let's say you are selling shoes. Okay, so let's say ABC shoes, right? So I do not know, maybe I just like randomly pick uh, your name here. Uh, okay, Johnson baby shoe. <laughs> All right. Okay, Johnson uh, baby shoes. Okay, so you are selling uh, sport shoes, Johnson baby under the brand name Johnson uh, baby. <laughs> okay, so this is example. Yeah? Okay, so what you need to do, okay, to list down the product. Okay, list down the product and then you just briefly describe what is the product. So it's a sport shoes uh, that cater for runners or maybe for those who go to gym or weightlifter or anything. So you have to describe your product actually, All right? When you come up with your product, of course, you need to know who is your customer. So let's say Johnson's uh, is actually coming up uh, the shoes that cater for the weightlifter. Right, so of course, uh, Johnson need to emphasize these shoes are actually made uh, the weight for the weightlifter uh, age from what? Okay, so whenever we talk about the target market, so you cannot like uh, say only for weightlifter. That one is too general. So you have to be precise or have to be specific. What kind of weightlifter that you are referring? Is it? Uh, young weightlifter is it like professional weightlifter is it amateur weightlifter is it a uh, leisure weightlifter because uh, we also have uh, the weightlifter that not competing but they just love to uh, lifting weight All right for 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 instance i have friends uh, who's very strong but never join any competition because uh, they really like to do weightlifting right like uh uh, snatch, okay, uh, like uh, that leaf, all those things, all right? So there's a kind of shoes for you to have uh, to, to perform this. So you can use any shoes actually, but there's a specific shoes uh, for those kind of uh, weightlifting for your information. So you have to be specific. And of course, uh, target market also. So let's say you are targeting to professional uh, weightlifter. You, you also have to determine on the pricing. So this professional weightlifter, how much their income actually, how much they are willing to pay for your uh, information. So from that, you can decide on the pricing. So you have to be specific when you are emphasizing on the target market. So you cannot like simply say, for instance, uh, students. 
cannot do that because why? Because we have a lot of students, but somehow, uh, which student that you are targeting? All right. So please uh, remember on the target market, the definition of target market, and then you have to also mention on the benefit of wearing that shoes. So like, like just now, Johnson, uh, coming out with the weightlifting shoes. So you have to uh, mention the benefit uh, of um. Uh, using this shoe so maybe uh, you can say your soul uh, will be like uh, grip on the floor for instance and then uh, it avoid slippery right uh, that kind is uh, the benefit all right and the fourth one special features okay so special features somehow uh, you might look it as the benefit but somehow uh, it's something else so what makes your shoes different compared to others weightlifter shoes because you have to understand whenever you uh, sell the product in the market or service in the market so you're not the only one who provide that kind of product or service there are a lot of competitors around you there's no way that you are doing it uh, alone right even like phone even uh, iphone they also have competitors samsung xiaomi and few others right so they're not alone so what makes iphone different compared to others so of course there are certain characteristics same come back to the shoes just now so what makes um these shoes uh different compared to others weightlifting shoes so maybe johnson can mention so these shoes is actually a custom made shoes that cater for uh for individual so uh you cannot have uh, the second shoes uh the same design for instance that is what is meant by special features the differentiation how you go into position yourself right somehow how you make yourself different compared to one and another even though the product offering is similar okay shoe is always shoe but what makes your shoe okay, is different maybe the colors okay the design right and then the customizations perhaps okay and then the after sales service perhaps and then you, you maybe you can say the sole can be replaced okay by by the company because like some shoes whenever you uh wear whenever the the sole is already like cannot be wearable so you have to throw away but your shoes the sole can be replaced that is the differentiation that we are talking about okay so i hope you clear with, with the concept and last but not least, you have to mention your management team or your team members in your ventures. So you just need to uh, explain it briefly. You do not need to exaggerate it. You do not need to elaborate it so much detail. So you just tell okay, briefly. And then give to the respondent about like 10 to 20 and let them think, uh, let them think and let them give the feedback uh, as well. So when you get the feedback, so that's why I like I said just now, you can actually develop better idea and also estimate sales and at the same time you are actually uh validate your present or your existence right somehow okay okay any questions before i move on with the other part no questions so far so good right okay no questions Okay, good. Thank you so much for the response, uh, Wayne. Right. So, uh, along the way, when you have this concept uh, statement or concept test, uh, so this one is not in your notes. Uh, so, this one extra knowledge. Uh, uh, whenever you uh, run the concept test, so you just show uh, what you're going to do. But sometimes you have to understand uh, some people uh, cannot relate it what you you are doing so like myself whenever you some of you or the seller describe all this i need to see the thing in front of me i need to experience it okay, somehow so that's why when you run the concept um, uh, statement or concept test so it's much better for you to have the prototype means that you have the prototype to show to the respondent uh, and then let them have the experience to try it uh, so that's why we say this is a usability testing because you have to understand uh, 
yes, you are the inventor of the product, so you know well about the product, no issue at all. But you have to understand that whenever you let other people use it, so is it difficult for them to use or is it too easy for them uh, to use? For you, maybe there's no problem because you are the inventor, you know everything about the your invention. But how about the end user? So that's why you prepare the prototype. So again, you have to understand that prototype is not the end product. So it's just the so that's why we call it as a prototype before you launch the product. So you show the model first, because later on when you get the better ideas, uh, solution uh, from the feedback and then like um uh, another uh, response from uh, the team members along the way uh, before the launch of the product. So maybe the end of the product it may look different and much better. So that's why, okay, in the first place, if you show keep the prototype, even though it's not so nice, that's fine because it's just a concept because you need to know whether it be easy or likable by, by the respondent or the user or, or not. So there are two kinds of prototype that you can uh, have. So first is the physical prototype, means that you can touch, okay, the customer can touch or experience. Somehow, uh, we can have the virtual prototype. So the virtual prototype usually something that, need to be produced in a large scale. So you don't have the cap capacity to produce in a large scale because of costing and so on. So maybe you can have virtual prototype. So that's why like this day we have what? Uh, last time we have like 3D uh, animation, but now uh, uh, because we have the technology, right? Maybe you have heard the, the hologram, right? And then uh, maybe you have heard the virtual reality, right? When you wear the 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 glasses, all this day. And in fact, now you can have the virtual and then the the uh, the, the virtual thing and also the, the reality, not virtual reality. So we call it as an augmented reality. Just like when you play Pokemon uh, Go uh, last time. So you look on the re real thing, but somehow there's a holographic thing. That is the augmented reality so it can be done on, on that uh, as well okay so the reason why why we have this like i said just now because we want to make sure the ease of use of the product before it be launched uh massively to the market all right so i hope okay, you clear uh, on that okay so now um we take a look uh, on the conclusion on under the product or service desirability so like i said just now desirability is the the measure to know whether the customer need or want the product uh, or not. So at the same time, you also the uh, focus on the um, design focus towards the customer. So it might uh, include the contact, the culture, and the goals. Okay, as well the customer's goals and the product experience. So when we conduct the usability testing, just now, and also the uh, the pro design aesthetic. Okay, whether the design is likable or not by by the customers. So sometimes uh, we may look the design is functional, but somehow the design very ugly. So the customers also do not like uh, as well. Okay, so it might focus on these three uh, aspect. All right. So take a look on the product or service demand. So under the product or service demand, uh, it's much more emphasized on the willingness uh, and the ability to buy for for the customers. So just now on the desirability, whether they have desire, or need, and want. But now we have to look whether they are willing to buy or not towards your product. So there are two steps uh, in assessing product or service demand. So first, you can always uh, administer a uh, buying intention survey. So this day when you are running the buying intention survey, it's quite easy uh, because uh, it can be done uh, online. So I can see that whenever you do the survey uh, for your FYP, so you no longer because uh, due to the uh, COVID or pandemic, so you no longer give uh, the physical paper uh, to the respondent. So you can always uh, share through WhatsApp group, Telegram, uh, through email, right? Uh, through social media, right? Uh, or any platform, online platform. So it's quite convenient. Uh, and you can give as much as uh, possible because uh, uh, the, the range of the internet is unlimited uh, for your uh, information. But of course, you need to determine uh, whose is your uh, sample and then you have to know uh, you are representing which population. 
right? Population, not Malaysian population. So let's say a group of customers, target market. So of course, when you run, okay, the the survey, I don't think that you manage to cover all the target customers. So let's say in Malaysia, you are targeting this specific group of customers and then you already have like the numbers of the target market which is 1 million customers so i don't think that you are going to uh, give survey to 1 million it's impossible all right even uh, the banchi in malaysia also it been run i think like uh, five years uh, once in the five years if i'm not mistaken and in fact, it cannot like cover all, even though they say they try to cover the whole 30 million population. As a business uh, entity, I don't think uh, to cover all the population uh, is possible. So in this case, you need to have sample. So how are you going to determine the sample? So check back uh, in the statistic uh, paper. Uh, maybe you can use Krajan and Morgan uh, or maybe uh, G Power or others method in order for you do, to determine uh, the sampling. Uh, for your information, right? So, uh, when you have this uh, sampling, so you need to prepare uh, a simple question because you need to know okay whether they want to buy the product or not. So, simple question that you can always uh, prepare uh, is just like this: How would you likely to buy the product? Okay, definitely would buy. Probably would buy. So you can always provide the answers for it. So let them uh, take, because why? Because uh, you need to make it fast because like some of the respondent, they may not like to read all the questions because like sometimes whenever like the students, right, uh, send me uh, the, the survey, uh, sorry to say, uh, sometimes uh, I, I postpone to uh, respond it, okay? And then I come back. Because like when I look at hey, why so long the, the questions, okay, so there are six sections. And then like I cannot like simply like take. Okay, so it's not good lah, okay, because if I simply take the outcome, okay, will be uh, terrible lah, for, for the student. So I just postpone it. Sometimes I forget. If I've got time, then I, I, I come back, okay, somehow. So same goes when you are running the product demand service demand. So make it simple. List five to ten um, simple question that easily to be answered by the respondents. Because why? Because you just want to estimate sales in the first round, so you're not going in depth yet. All right. So there are a few things, uh, Okay, you need to question. We are. Are you uh, are willing to um, to recommend to your friends and family? Uh, what variant um, variants uh, that you prefer? Is it red, blue, white? Okay, and so on. And then you give the answers. Not give the answer. Give the 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 choices for them uh, to take uh, for for the answers. So that is how okay you run the uh, buying intention uh, survey. So this is the old one. So you can use the old mon uh, the survey monkey. But nowadays you can always use the Google form. Everything Google form. Okay, and then some more is free. All right. Uh, the second one you can always use the secondary data. But like I say, uh, secondary data you cannot rely it so much. So it can be your guideline, but if you try to rely it so much because it's because it's more on the historical something that is past. Sometimes it may not relevant uh, anymore, but at some time it can be a guideline for you to predict what will happen uh, in the future. Okay, so I hope okay, uh, on the uh, library internet, I do not need to explain so much because I believe you guys are really good at exploring or uh, searching the information from the, if not from the library, maybe from the internet because internet these days is quite easy to search, okay, somehow. Okay, but maybe I will explain to you the gumshoe uh, research, yeah? So what is actually gumshoe uh, research? So, uh... Maybe when you go to a uh, mall, uh, for instance, all right, sometimes you might have the feeling that someone is watching you, all right? Especially like, uh, I don't know, like, like women, uh, most of the time they have the, the higher instinct compared to male that they feel that they've been uh, watched. Right? So is it true or not you've been watched? It could be probably, it could be probably, yes, uh, you've been monitoring. So is it for the bad purpose or good purpose? So we do not know. So sometimes uh, we have to understand that 
whenever that you have this kind of feeling, it could be probably yes, you've been watched, but maybe the the people who watch you okay is actually a detective means that a gumshoe a researcher, right? Sometimes. So what they do, okay, actually, so usually what they do, so they just like observe the the people who in the shopping mall and then they have the paper, lah, okay, uh, the paper uh, or the, the format already been prepared. So they will jot down a uh, uh, type of dress uh, the person uh, wearing when entering the shopping mall. And then how many people are uh, entering the mall for your information, uh, gender, male or female, right? And then like uh, which shop they usually uh, go, right? Somehow. So you be monitored and then uh, the information been, uh, been written uh, on the paper or in the tablet or anything or any device so that that information it will be useful for the researcher and other researcher marketers to study on your behavior, on the consumer's uh, behavior. So that is uh, what gumshoe researchers uh, do. Okay, They access the information from you. So that's why whenever you feel that someone is watching you in the shopping mall, uh, apart than CCTV, uh, it could, could probably, yes, uh, there's people uh, who are watching you, which is the gumshoe uh, researcher. Okay, so we are not talking about the bad guy or other thing, but somehow it could be yes. Sometimes, uh, uh, like some strangers, whenever you try to buy things, okay, on the shelf, right, and then like suddenly uh, out of nowhere, maybe the auntie or uncle or maybe like strangers, uh, beside you say, hey, why not you try this and this, and then like try to give like recommendation and so on and so forth. So most probably the one who, who speak to you is also the Gumshoe uh, researcher, all right? Uh, so I think I have uh, encounter with them a few times, but I don't say, uh, I don't say, hey, are you Gumshoe researcher? So of course they do not know because Gumshoe, maybe for this subject, yes, we use it, but maybe for others outside, maybe they will use a okay, different name, okay? Maybe they say detective or maybe like, uh, uh, shopper, investigators, or detective uh, in a more okay, kind of thing. So there's lots of names. So right now we are using the gumshoe uh, research, researcher. Okay, so I hope okay, you clear the term of gumshoe researcher. And then these gumshoe researchers uh, will get the hands-on information. It means that they are getting the primary information compared to the internet and library research, whereby internet library research is much more on the secondary uh, research right so let's move on okay so i think i already like explain you in detail uh, on the gumshoe researchers right and then of course uh, it's much better for you to have hands on go to field work in order to get the information under the product and the service uh, demand okay so now let's move on to the Second component. Second component under the feasibility analysis is the industries and the target market feasibility analysis. So first of all, you have to understand uh, what is an industry, all right? So industry actually is a group of companies or firms, uh, whereby this group of firms actually uh, producing similar product or service. So for instance, like. Um, uh like fast food restaurants like kfc mcdonald texas chicken and few others uh fast food uh, restaurants so whenever you combine all together these fast food restaurants so it become the fast food uh, uh industries all right so let's say um if you are talking on the airlines company like a asia's Right, Asia is a firm. You cannot say Asia is an industry. It's a company, and then uh, you have MAS, Malindo Air, Singapore Airline, and others airlines company. So when you combine it or grouping all together, they fall under the uh, airlines industries. 
Utah is an organization, it's a university. So if you combine with other universities in the whole Malaysia, it becomes education uh, industries. Okay, so I hope okay, you clear the definition of the industries. All right, so the market okay, is actually where people uh, meet together. Okay, not the market, fish market. Yeah. So market okay, means that okay, the place where people meet together, whether physically or 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 not physically, where uh, both parties agree to one in another in exchanging goods. All right, and in return they get like some other other things. All right, so that is uh, what we call a uh, market. All right, target market like I say is a specific group that you want to aim in order for them to buy or use your product or your service. All right, so in order for you to understand the industry's uh, attractiveness, okay, industry attractiveness. This is the industry attractiveness, okay, young and not old, uh, early in the product life cycle, okay, and then fragmented and not concentrate, growing and not shrinking, uh, the terms uh, must have uh, versus uh, want to have, okay, so I, I just explained a bit, must have uh, or want to have, must have is like a mandatory, want to have is much more like a, a desire just now, must have like a demand. Okay, like, like the, the product demand and product desirability. So some people, when they look the product or service, they say, okay, that's nice. I really like it. So when people ask, do you want to have it? Yes, I think I want to have it. But it doesn't mean that it's really mandatory for them to have that product. But some people, when they look at the product, that's the thing that they really want to have. Or must have, sorry, must have. Just like... um uh okay like myself right so maybe a mcdonald's uh, of uh, uh comes out with the new product offering like bts meal so maybe if uh, uh you ask me do you want to have it maybe i want to have it but it's not like a must for me but for so specific group of customers right uh like a k-pop uh, fan that kind of thing is a must have for them Right, so you have to, uh, so I hope you clear uh, the, the explanation. Must have and want to have. I okay, uh, if you if have it, okay, then I'm, I'm okay with that. If I don't have it, that's fine with, with me. Uh, for K pop fan, it's a mandatory for them uh, to have. So I have a few friends who age uh, like myself, okay, who's a uh, uh, K pop uh, hard fan, <laughs> die hard fan. Okay, so buy or bought, okay, all these are BTS, me, all the K-pop uh, merchandise, okay, all those things. All right, and then uh, not crowded and high uh, return of sales. Okay, high, uh, um, uh, high operating margins is not expenditure, it's a return of sales. And uh, lastly, we can consider on the industry's attractiveness, it's not depending on the historical low price or even government intervention uh, like um, petrol, right? Petrol, government intervention, mostly. Um, uh, basic needs like in Malaysia for your information, like flour, sugars, all these like uh, chicken, beef, uh, salt, okay, cooking oil, all these are actually controlled um, goods in Malaysia. But maybe in other countries like in United States, uh, it's based on the free market. Here in Malaysia, we are actually uh, having the mixture of our uh, economy. Okay, so we have uh, communism a bit. Okay, but we are not communist country. Uh, the concept, uh, Islamic uh, approaches, uh, and then a free uh, market. Okay, as well. So we combine it all together. So United States, hundred uh, percent uh, capitalist. Okay, a uh, kind of economy. So it depends on the demand and supply. So whenever there is high demand, low supply, so the seller can put as many as much price they want. It depends on who are willing to pay more. But in Malaysia, that's different thing. So there will be intervention wherever the seller try to uh, put on the higher price. Maybe you remember last time on the face mask when we have shortage on the face mask. Uh, so some sellers taking advantage to sell on much higher price so the government take actions against the seller all right so of course the seller cannot like maximizing or utilizing okay the profitability of the company so you have to look okay on this aspect uh, as well 
whether there's an intervention uh, or not. So how are we going to know that this characteristic? So are we just like do the wild guessing that, oh, I think because the industry is okay, it's still new. I think because uh, everyone just started or uh, maybe the product life cycle uh, is still new or is it like uh, you think that everyone uh, must have rather want to have. So in order for you to understand this, attractiveness so what you need to do you have to study the industries uh, analysis so just now i mentioned what is industries right so in order for you to understand the industry so you have to study the industry so we we have the industries analysis so there are many model uh when you are studying the industries uh, analysis uh so one of the models is the five forces other than that we can use the uh the environmental trend uh the uh, the business trend, the blue ocean strategy, uh, the red ocean strategy, and few others um, model. But eventually, we are actually learning about the industry. But in my class, uh, I still prefer using the five forces model because uh, I, I I don't say I only learn five forces model. I also learn the red ocean strategy and blue ocean strategy and few other strategy. But I'm really familiar with the five forces uh, model so that's why in your assignment uh, please use uh, the five forces model instead of others uh, model so i don't say others model is wrong because like some others lecturers or maybe when you work in the future maybe they will ask you to use different model uh, that's still fine there's nothing wrong okay, with it so it depends uh, to who that you're going to present so if you are going to present to me so of course i already like emphasize five forces model don't show me anything else all right, so you have to study the five forces model. So under the five forces model, you're going to look on the track of substitutions, uh, the track of new entrant, uh, the track of existing competitors, track of your customer, and track of your suppliers. So from all these five forces, so you eventually will understand the industry that which area that you going to do, which area or which part that that really attract you so much or which part that you need to avoid because you don't have the capacity to do it. So from that, you will understand the attractiveness of the industries, right? Because you study all the, the five things okay, that I mentioned you just now. So you cannot like simply put, okay, because uh, the industry is young and oh, how you know? So that's why you have to look on the industries analysis that we're going to learn next week. Okay, no worry uh, on that. I will explain in very, very much detail like I'm explaining you in this feasibility uh, analysis. So it's much detail. So we already uh, passed one hour. So I still cover up to the industries and the um, uh, target market uh, feasibility analysis. No worry. Okay, I will make sure Okay, we will finish uh, on time today. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we done on the industry. Okay, attractiveness. So now, uh, okay. So this is how. Okay, our role of primary and secondary research in invest in, in investigating industry attractiveness. So primary research, like just now, I mentioned, uh, based on the five forces just now or others uh, model. Secondary research, internet or library research, lah. All right. So when we take a look on the target market, so. Uh, once we study the industries, so eventually it will create the the thing that or uh, attract you to do something that you good at actually. So even though you are very passionate uh, with the thing that you want to do, but if you don't have the capability uh, or if you don't have the skill uh, somehow, so you need to reconsider. All right. So you need to look the area that you really good at. Okay, in the industries, uh, and then the resources. Okay, that, that you have. Okay, as well. So let's say when you already like identify uh, the area that you, that you good at, and then you have the interest to do that. So that's why we are saying that you will concentrate that particular area, or other word we call it as segmentation, right? So from the industry, industries analysis, and then you know what things that you're going to do. We call it as a segmentation. So segmentation is not target market, yeah. So segmentation is your focus of your uh, area of your focus or area of your concentration. What you going to? What are you going uh, to do? 
actually. So once you have the areas of your concentration, your segmentation, so from that you can identify your potential customer. So because why? Because you already know what you're going to offer to the market. So that's why you have product or the service. So in this case, you will have the target market. So when you have the target market, it's a specific group that you are going to appear and that you are planning to sell uh, the product or the service to the customer and hoping they will buy. And of course, there's uh, there's some much more uh, detailed explanation. So if you want to go much narrower, so you will go to the niche market. So the niche market is actually under the target market, but you are actually going much deeper, much narrower uh, uh, group, right? So target market is specific group, but niche market is much narrower uh, group okay from that particular target uh, market all right so how, how are we going to know the target market attractiveness so of course you need to uh, run uh, uh, like the competitors analysis and then you have to look on the others externals okay factors right as well the support from the governments uh, the consumers behaviors okay itself the stakeholders uh, and then uh, the the market trend Okay, uh, somehow all the environment, whether internally and externally. So I don't expect you in your assignment, you tend to have all the elements. So I just want to see uh, what kind of element that really um, influence most uh, in the chosen uh, company. So this is an example of how to determine the target market uh, attractiveness. So is it can lead to the short term profit, the long term profit, and then whether uh, it can... Um, the market growth okay, can be uh, significant okay or not the size uh, of the market after the growth right so whenever you propose uh, to your chosen company uh, to the new markets for instance so how much can okay, the growth okay, were, were you experiencing is it 10 percent per year is it 20 percent per year means that okay the market growth means that the, the numbers of sales the numbers of customers that you will have uh, the very current product uh, to the market members, cost of entries again. Uh, so that's why uh, you have to consider uh, how much okay, money uh, later on under the financial feasibility analysis when you want to propose uh, to the chosen company competition within the market, how fierce the competition within the market is to reach uh, market members, right? Uh, openness market members to product and communication readiness of your suppliers to provide uh, support to you and others partners also to provide to you and also political stability and the government support uh, as well so this is how you determine the target market attractiveness so just now we look on the industries as a whole generally but now on the target market so you have to consider uh, this uh, as well before uh, pursuing uh, to your customers Right. So hold on, I need to take drinks first. All right, any questions? Okay, no questions. Okay, no question as well. All right, so we can move on. Uh okay, so this is the, the target market attractiveness. Uh uh, the consideration that you can consider so something that is already have okay and then you just need to have like some improvement or even uh or even you have the something breakthrough or new invention okay somehow okay so on the improvement that is already there that you need to look whether there's a opportunity a window of opportunity or not so whether it's a good time for you to show the improvement so when it comes to the breakthrough whether you can set the standard or Maybe you can have the brand recognition okay, towards your, your breakthrough. So I think like uh, like Elon Musk uh, uh, breakthrough on settling on, on Mars. Okay, so this is something that uh, need to be set somehow the, the standards and then like the brand recognition um, of the company. And then of course, okay, uh, the company is already becoming the, the first mover uh, of trying to to uh, be on, on mass right somehow 
Okay, so we move on to the third uh, component uh, on the feasibility analysis. Uh, so it's the uh, organizational feasibility analysis. Again, is the assessment inside the company that you build or the chosen company for your uh, assignment. So take a look uh, under the feasibility analysis. So there are two things that you need to consider under feasibility analysis. The prowess or the capability ability and also resource sufficiency, which emphasizes on the non-financial resources. So take a look on the management uh, prowess. So actually management prowess is actually the ability or capability uh, of that management. Means that okay, you and others, okay, team members, uh, that uh, requisite passion and expertise uh, towards uh, launching okay, the business. So, uh, in order for you to have this capability or the skills required, already like mentioned earlier um, in the first class, that you, whatever you do in your life, so you must have passion. So that's why, like, whenever I mention uh, what makes entrepreneurs so successful, so one of the characteristics uh, is to have passion in doing the business. So why you need to have passion? So when you have passion, so eventually you are trying, you have the belief uh, to change things. So from what it is. So it means that you will see that something that need to be improved, but somehow uh, no other people notice it. And then you believe that you can make it work. Or make it change right somehow so when you have this belief okay actually so eventually okay you will you have determination to focus so whatever people say to you so so you will like uh stay away from the naysayer uh somehow because why because you are very focused in whatever uh, you're doing so if you're not um passion okay in whatever you're doing so that's why when people try to belittle you uh try to take you down so you actually easily to be uh motivated so i don't say if you're passion you will not be demotivated but somehow you get back on track okay, very fast if you are very uh, passionate so when you are very passionate when you are focused so eventually it will increase your skill in doing whatever thing that you really like to do so when it increase your skill eventually it will increase your understanding so we increase your understanding so that's why whenever uh things that people uh, see it's very difficult so it's look easy for you so that's why we call it the it increase the capability and ability right somehow okay so i hope you you clear uh with, with that 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 explanation so of course it required the passion so uh i i see uh i was in sales uh last time uh i can see like uh we have a lot of people in sales but not all people in sales love to do sales to be honest with you because i was in sales so when i asked them why uh they stay in sales but why not okay you do something else they say no choice because why no work that time okay last time also if we have work, but somehow the limited choice that, that we have. Okay, even like myself also, uh, in the beginning, to be honest, I not favor to do sales. Because why? Because I need to talk with people because I'm kind of an introvert person uh, last time. Let's talk, compare now. But once uh, I be in sales, so I have like no choice. So if I just like uh, reluctant uh, to do my work, so I cannot like perform well. So that's why I have to push myself. So I have to change. So I have to be have to talk with people and then like uh, facing all the rejection. Okay, so if you are doing sales, so you must be uh, able to accept rejection, rejection, criticism, and so on and so forth. So of course it will demoralize you, but in the end, if you are strong enough, uh, you can come back and then like you can. Uh, I don't say you can be the 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 really good uh, salesperson, but of course you can be better from what you have uh, been before. So I don't say I'm a good uh, salesperson, but I can say uh, I can do sales. Okay, better. <laughs> right? Uh, because it requires the prowess, ability, capability, understanding, and so on. Okay, and so forth. So it requires all this aspect. Right? And then uh, take a look uh, on... Okay, so maybe like this, I, I don't think... Okay, so maybe you can read on your own, lah, this one. So this one... Uh, 
it's a joke, but actually it's related with the understanding between male and, and female, right? Somehow. So maybe you can read it on your own. Uh, this one, I think like this uh, slide, uh, this video, I will share it in my YouTube channel because uh, it's much more detailed, right? So take a look uh, under the resource uh, sufficiency. So under resource sufficiency, so we are talking on the non-financial resources um, whereby these non-financial resources will lead you to have um, a competitive uh, advantage. So we are not talking about the money tree. So we are talking the resources that you have. So what kind of resources that, that we are trying to emphasize here? So we can always take a look on the location that you have. The affordable office or let's pay means that the location lah, right? And then the uh, the support from the government, not only the local and state government, means that the support from the government, uh, for you to do the business. So why again okay, it's important for you to have this uh, support? So some people uh say uh mostly I can see in the social media. So if you have support from the government, uh, so one word can okay, we say to them the cronism, okay, or whatsoever terminology that you want to put but actually for your information when you are doing the business you like it or not right so you must have a, a good uh, relationship with the authorities with the government so it's not because you want to bodate them or what so it's just because you want to smooth the operation because you want to have the efficient operation in your companies and also that you align with the rules and regulation that's set by the authority so when you have the the support from the government okay or or the authorities so usually uh you've been given the priority uh by them so it's not because okay they want to have your money or what but of course they want your your money because why because later on you pay your tax somehow so if, imagine if you have uh more than uh 2.5 million uh profit every year so the government already take uh, you on, on 24 percent from your from your profit so of course uh whenever you have uh, this support from the government so sometimes uh you will be like so-called like uh, assumption so i don't say you will not pay tax but of course maybe the privilege of having the uh, tax free for maybe like one year or two years somehow because like when it comes to the corporate tech all those things so actually uh you can make like the negotiations okay somehow okay but of course it requires you to have a communication skill a good nego skill and and of course a good rapport uh, with the government in order for you to get that privilege so that's why you can see like uh, like some like, like corporate companies why they have like this kind of privilege and so on it's not because you say it's a cronism and so on and so forth because they have the good networking relationship with the authority and with the government so that's why they're being given privilege on that so that's why it will become competitive advantage to your company okay so don't get it wrong so when you are in the business whether you're small business or big business or medium type of business so you must get the support okay from the authorities and also uh from the the government okay as well because like sometimes they might uh open you and a new opportunity all right so i hope you clear uh with that so don't uh just like having skeptical uh or on the government uh or, or whatever kind of thing so some of the thing maybe yes you can like disagree but some of the thing you can agree okay with them okay as well all right so i hope okay, you clear uh with this okay so we have to think of the business mindset okay instead of the normal kind of people right so think of entrepreneurial mindset and then the quality of a labor pool so of course uh when you have a good quality of labor skillful worker so it leads to the better uh or the better um uh, competition towards your competitors right so why because the things become effective right the productivity okay much better uh the rejection of the produced product okay uh becoming less right and then uh of course uh the profitability okay much better the quality of the product or service much better because why because you have these quality pools available okay so don't underestimate this and then uh the supply from the suppliers and also customers so i just emphasize on the supplier right how suppliers can help to give 
competitive advantage. So even though you and your competitors getting the the materials from the same suppliers, but somehow maybe you wonder why the suppliers give privilege or give credit more to your competitors, but not you. Because why? Because your competitors might have a good relationship with that suppliers. Okay, good repo somehow. So of course it gives a uh, advantage uh, to to your competitors whereby they can opt credit terms or maybe longer credit terms than you because they can roll out the money compared to you. 14 days you have to pay to the suppliers but for your competitors, three months later then they need to pay. So which one is better for those who pay uh, 14 days for those who pay three months? So of course, uh, when we are doing the business for those who pay okay, three months, being given option of paying three months without any interest. 14 days, you have to give the money. So the turnover is high. Your cash flow will reduce. So you cannot like rolling the money. But those who pay like three months, so they can roll the money as well. Okay, in order to grow the business. You see, that is the, uh, the why important to have the key support from the supplier and also for customers because they will give support and they will help to promote your business uh, as well. Okay, through the viral, uh, through the reference and so on and so forth. And of course, the willingness, high quality, high quality employees. So just like uh, the quality labor pools okay, as well. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, it's much better if you can have a better strategic partnership with others' company. So it will give uh, better knowledge, uh, uh, lowering down uh, the cost of production and so on, transfers of the, uh, technology, transfers of knowledge. And of course, uh, it will give better for, from you compared to others' competitors when you have others' companies would like to collaborate uh, with you. All right? Uh, and then uh, the approximately of similar business okay of sharing the knowledge so it's similar like a strategic partnership so it means that okay uh, two companies okay having a, a transfer of knowledge so this one we're going to learn in chapters 14 okay type of a uh, group so we have joint ventures we have strategic alliance so this part this this part okay is much more on the joint ventures uh, on the strategic alliances okay exchanging knowledge exchanging technology all those things. All right, and of course, uh, the importance of having the intellectual uh, property. So whenever you have the invention, so please uh, protect it in the first place. Don't think that uh, that your invention is less important or least important. Because why? Because you never know that eventually your invention or your creation is actually provide the competitive advantage to your company. So this one we will learn in chapters uh, 12. Because uh, somehow uh, we have okay, many um, um, studies, case studies that uh, those who have uh, a good invention, a good creation, but didn't uh, protect uh, in the first place, so they not getting any competitive advantage because others taking their invention and creation and claim as theirs. So that's why you have to be careful whenever you have invention or creation, protect it in the first place. Don't disclose it. Don't just let people use it for free because others will use it for their competitive advantage. And then, strange thing, uh, even though that's your invention, but you're not allowed to use your invention. So that is very irony. Lah. Okay, so most of the business that I have uh, read and see. All right. So uh, we're done on the organizational feasibility uh, analysis. So now we move on to the last part of the... Um, feasibility analysis, so which is the financial feasibility uh, analysis. Okay, so let me take a look uh, on other links. So is there any question? Okay, no question. All right, so again, like I mentioned, the, uh, the, the financial feasibility analysis is the assessment towards your financial strength, the evaluation, All right? Whether it can be done, it can be proceeded. Or not so there are three things that you need to look at under the financial feasibility analysis so first one uh, is the total startup cash secondly financial performance of your competitors or your similar business number three uh, is the overall financial attractiveness of proposed uh, ventures All right so now so take a look on the total startup uh, needed All right so last time when I 
I had students when they required to do the proposal of their new ventures. But you guys, okay, just need to uh, choose problematic companies, small companies, uh, and then propose them. But of course, you need to run the feasibility analysis uh, as well. So here, we need to determine how much total startup needed. But chosen company, so means that total uh, cash needed for the proposal. Right, so remember, feasibility analysis is not only for startup company, so it's also meant for the companies that having like a new proposal, new opportunity, or new solution. Right, so I hope okay, you clear uh, with that because when you have the new uh, opportunity, new solution, so you need to assess whether it can be done or not. So of course, you need to do the feasibility analysis. Don't don't misunderstood that it's only meant for startup company. Yeah, so here on the total startup cash need the or total. Uh, cash needed. Uh, actually, how much? Okay, actually. So, I give you like scenario. So maybe I share. Uh, okay, maybe I illustrate. Okay, example here. You guys can see uh, the document here, the Microsoft Word here. Okay, can I get the response? Can I see. Yep. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay, so let me show you uh, how it works on, on knowing okay, uh, total startup cash or total cash required. Right, so let's say uh, uh, Wayne, yeah? is it Wayne? Is it Wayne, right? Am I pronouncing it right? Okay. 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 Hey. Why the cursor not stable? Okay, Wayne. So let's say Wayne, okay, just finished the study, okay, from Utah. So she plan to have a business or startup, okay. So right now she's only have in hand. Five thousand. Why my Wacom uh, running away? Okay. Just wait. Huh? Okay, five thousand. She has five thousand, right? And then she plan to have the business. So, um. So how are you going? Okay, uh, is it okay? My question now. So this five thousand is it the startup needed? Can I get uh the response? Okay, Ping Ping say yes. Okay, others how about others? As capital, okay. Ping Ping say okay five thousand as capital. Okay, how about others? Okay, I just want to to see whether you guys understand okay or not. Okay, so let me take a look on the second link. Okay. Okay, Ping Ping say yes. Okay. Uh Yango say yes. Right. Okay. So actually for your information, uh this five thousand is not a startup capital, you know. So maybe just now you 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 notice that I mentioned Wadi just finished the study. She planned to has uh to have a business, right? But currently she only have a uh, five thousand. In hand, so means that okay, cash in hand, okay. So the amount of money she's currently having, not capital, all right, because we do not know how much okay her startup would be like, right? Ah, you see. <laughs> so in order to know okay how much okay money, uh, she requires for doing the business, all right. So we need to do the budgeting. Okay, so that's why in your assignment, chosen company, so you have to know the budgeting, how much money required for your proposed solution. So you can list down, okay, I just show you like a uh, like simple example. Alright, so you just make a table, okay, like this. And I just give you like few, a few things. Alright, maybe in your assignment you can do like this. Right, so this is amount. You, 
terrible lah. Amount. So this is the items. Okay. Whenever you want to start the business, the thing that you think that required for you to do the business. Right. So maybe like first, uh, we can consider. Okay. I do not know what kind of business that she's going to do. Uh, maybe... Okay, never mind lah. So, uh, we just assume that what are the things that are uh, required to do the business. So, maybe the rental, perhaps. Right. Why so sensitive? Yeah? This rental, so let's say uh, shop rental around 1,000. Okay, number two. Okay, so she need to pay the utilities. Okay, so let's say utilities, 500 ringgit. Okay, what else you need? So you need to have, okay, furniture in your office. Furniture, so let's say furniture, you get it like, because this is small office, yeah, so maybe we consider like 2,000. Right, and then what else? Okay, so she needs to have transportation, okay, furniture. Okay, so maybe e-commerce, okay, e-commerce. Okay, so maybe e-commerce also, you need to have physical brick and motor also, you know. But maybe not as a uh, as, uh, 100% like a uh, physical store. Alright. Okay, so that's why okay, we say like 2,000 lah. Alright. Okay, thank you, uh, Yango, uh, for the comment. Okay, really appreciate it. Okay. And then uh, furniture, uh, utilities, what else? Uh, computers. Okay, printers. Wait, yeah. Huh? I do not know why it like moving. Okay, without my hand. Okay. Okay, printers. Okay, sorry, yeah. Uh, uh, the writing you using the <laughs> online very terrible. <laughs> Okay, computers, printers, writing, uh, printers, computers around, okay, let's say 1,500. Okay, what else? Uh, uh, transportation. Uh, it falls under the utilities. Lah. Okay, utilities. All right, thank you. Okay, so you see, uh, you you guys okay already knows okay already. Uh, so these are the thing okay that we going to have okay when we are doing the business. Okay, so you have to list down okay actually. So you cannot like uh say okay that okay I think I have this. So you have to list down. Then you can have uh clearly understand okay what you are act uh actually need. And why is it's moving? Huh? supposed to touch the the, the the pad then it move okay transportations okay transportation so maybe uh, she will need okay, motorcycle right motorcycle because like need to go to post office ma because what e-commerce okay so maybe motorcycle five thousand ringgit lah Okay, and maybe others lah, miscellaneous. Okay, so this is to name a few. Uh. So maybe you say, okay, there's a lot of things. Yes, there's a lot of things. But I just give you like some basic idea. So how you go about, okay, on this. So miscellaneous, maybe 1,000 ringgit. Right. So we total up. Total. Uh, so this is how, okay, you're going okay, to know, okay, your, 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 Start up lah, basically. So, since my maths is not good, <laughs> so I need to use calculator lah. Okay, even though it's a very simple thing. 1,000. Okay, so this is 1,000. So, plus with 500. 
So plus again with 2,000. And then computer printer 1,500. And then transportation uh, 5,000. And then miscellaneous 1,000. Okay, so the answers is... Okay, so basically, uh, Winnie uh, need to have uh, 11,000 for her startup, right? So since that, okay, she just graduated from Utah, right? So with less experience, uh, working experience, very, uh, very zero because a fresh graduate. So uh, no reputation. And then uh, whenever uh, she tried to ask money from... Family, so family also maybe say okay, they also have shortage of money. Relative also uh, not um, um, willing to give the money because okay, everyone need the money uh, right now, for instance. And then, of course, when you go to the bank, uh, of course, bank, okay, uh, we say, uh, where is your shop? And then you absolutely have no shop yet. Because why? Because you just plan to start your shop. So that's why you prepare the proposal. So bank usually, to be honest with you, uh, whenever uh, you don't have the business yet, and then if you show your proposal, so usually you will not get <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the amount of money. Unless if you are a salary earner, you have the salary slip, and then you have the bank statement. But if you're doing the business, uh, just started, right? And then not showing any like evidence of your income yet. So it's very hard to be honest for you to get the funding, honestly, right? Very hard. I don't say okay, you cannot get, but it's very, very hard. Okay, you know, right? I never see uh, uh, those who just started the business get, get the money uh, in the first place, right? So, so of course, the last option, okay, um, it's not advisable because why? Because it's very risk, risk risky. Because why? Because you are, if uh, if we need look for the illegal money lender, so it will jeopardize okay, uh, her safety. Okay, if she, she cannot pay it, and of course, uh, we are talking now. You are we need want to do the legal business, registered business. So of course, need to avoid all these unnecessary thing. So we need only have five thousand. But the startup is 11,000. So my question now, okay, so I want to see okay, your, your answers. Uh, so, so maybe I ask Wayne okay, herself or maybe others. Okay, so maybe if you are in the Wayne position, my question now, will you proceed with the business or will you uh, forget about the business? Okay, uh, so you okay, say, uh, advertising, yes, you can include okay, as well, advertising, but I just show you the example. So maybe in your assignment, you can include it okay, as well. Okay, so can I take a look at uh, your response okay, on that? Okay, Wayne, will you proceed? You just have 5,000, but your startup requires you to have 11,000. How about others? If you are in the Wayne's position or Wayne's shoes, so will you want to proceed or will you just forget about the ideas, the, 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 the business? Because the business requires 11,000. Okay. I want to see your response. Anyone? Maybe you can try to work from house first. Okay. Okay. That's a good. Okay. Try. But my question now, uh, do you want to proceed or will you forget the, the idea? Okay, PMP say take the challenge. We need can find people to invest. But like I said just now, nobody's want to uh, to help her. So she's on her own Okay, right now. Because you have to understand when you do the business in the first place, in the beginning, nobody uh, wants to support you. Whenever you ask the money from your friends and family, they run away. I remember when I first uh, finished my study and, I, and then I planned to have a business. I approach many friends, relative. Whenever when it comes to the money, they run away. <laughs> the correct answer to proceed, but who will we actually do? Okay, so you say okay, uh, you will uh the correct answer um to proceed, but of course okay, Wayne lah. Okay, so let's say like you, young go. So if you're in the Wayne's position, so will you proceed? Actually, okay, proceed with partnership. Okay, so a good try. Okay, so 
maybe you can recall what we have learned uh, in the first chapter, the definition of uh, entrepreneurship. So an individual who identify opportunity and uh, of course the opportunity that he or she identify, uh, it might lead to the successful in doing the business, but of course, at the same time, he or she might face the limitation, which is the scarcity, okay, like resources, capital, manpower, all those things. But he or she uh, reluctant, okay, uh, in doing uh, uh, means that okay, he has the uh, still have the uh, the perseverance in doing it. Okay, so that is what is meant by the entrepreneurship. Even though okay, they are facing the limitation, the obstacle, and so on, but because uh, of this limitation, he or she still want to do it. So I can see like Ping Ping okay, uh, have the entrepreneurial mindset, right? Wayne also maybe uh, yes have also okay entrepreneurial mindset, okay. Uh, Wei Ji also have the entrepreneurial mindset, okay. Uh, Yang Go also have the entrepreneurial mindset. Okay, uh, Yuling also, uh, I can say, okay, having an entrepreneurial okay, mindset and a few others, uh, I can see that you have the entrepreneurial mindset that you not identified yet, right? <laughs> okay, that's really interesting because my previous class, uh, previous uh, years, uh, they say uh, will not proceed. So what I'm trying to say here, so here, even though you are facing limitation of resources, so what you can do now, right, here, so you can do uh, the cost saving method. So we call it as a bootstrapping. So instead of using 11,000, so you say might, okay, use only 5,000 or less than 5,000. So maybe like uh, when you say work from house because online business. So you do not need to have what? Rental because you stay with your parents. Zero cost already. All right, zero cost. Utility, since that you stay with your mama, your parents, and then you say, okay, you 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 are the 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 proudest, okay, daughter or proudest son, or maybe like um the the number one in the family, okay, that that be lovable, okay. You do not need to pay anything, lah. Zero also. Furniture, because you stay with your family, zero. Haha. <laughs> Computers, printers, do you really need to have it? But because you learned in Utah last time, you were students, so of course you have the remaining printers and uh, computers and still workable. So do you really need it? So maybe at this time, you do not need it when you first start the business. Zero. All right? Because you already have what it is. So when you do the business, so you just utilize of what you actually have. Not not to be proud what you want to spend, uh, actually, all right? And of course, transportation. So since that you are doing the online business and so happened that uh, that you last time used your e-bike when you come to campus, all right? And even though uh, that you are in your hometown already and then some more, the post office is really nearby to you. So you do not need to have motorcycle. So you just use your e-bike already. Zero, all right, and of course the miscellaneous. Uh, so you cannot say like zero lah. So of course you need to have like backup, and maybe like our friend just now mentioned like advertising and so on. Maybe like one thousand plus a bit. So actually, the actual amount that you going to start the business is not ten, eleven thousand. It's just around one thousand only. So means that you do not need to utilize all your saving, yeah. In your in your business, so Wayne just need to have one thousand to start her online okay, business. Ah, uh, so that is what I'm saying. Okay, all the entrepreneurial uh, mindset. So you do not need to use all the money because, like some people say, when you have this amount of money, so you have to use it all. No, so you have to use it smart. All right. So not all to use it. So maybe the remaining four four thousand you can use to something else. Okay, uh, somehow, okay, no need rental, okay, and then like do the partnership, okay, okay perhaps, so like our friend just now, no, the post can be up also, uh, you see, can pick up also, so you do not need to have the transportation at the beginning, but of course, you have to understand, uh, the startup, you may not need to have all the capital, but again, when we learn on the growth of the company, then uh, you need to have other courses, so maybe uh, last time you stay at home, do the business at home. But of course, when your business can grow large, you need to uh, store your, your stock, 
okay, or your 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 goods, okay, you need to have like small warehouse, for instance. Even like Zalora last time. Uh, not last time they do not have the warehouse, but now they need to have the warehouse because the business grow, no choice. But maybe in the beginning you do not need to have it, right? So you just start, uh, as much as the money that you only have. So this is what uh the term I can't remember. You just start okay that that if you just have five hundred ringgit, so you just start as like five hundred ringgit okay only. So in this case, when he managed to save uh up to um. Uh, four thousand ringgit from her saving. Okay, so I hope okay, you clear on the term of the how much a okay, money uh uh required. Okay, I do not know why suddenly uh. <laughs> I do not know why suddenly disconnected. Huh? Hmm. Because I talk too much, perhaps. <laughs> okay, so never mind. Uh, I think the other uh, link, okay, is not a uh, pause. Uh, so maybe I'll just share, okay, the the other the other one later on in the YouTube. No worry. Uh, alright. So we done on the startup cash. Okay, so I think we just almost to finish. Okay, we are at four thirty two. So we have two more. So I just like briefly explain uh, on the financial performance of similar business. So we when we talk about financial performance of similar business, to be honest with you, uh, it's very very um, uh, difficult uh, to assess the financial performance of of others' business or even your competitors. So let's say if you, even you ask uh, me uh, how much is my salary. I would definitely will not share it to you because it's a personal and confidential, right? Unless it's a public listed company, you have no choice to share with to the public because it's a public owned company partially, right? So for this, how are you going to do this? So of course you cannot get it to be honest with you. So that's why I don't expect you to get hundred uh, percent information. If you get twenty thirty percent. That would be great, okay, as well, because it's very very hard to get, uh, the personal info about others' businesses. So what you can do most of the time, you can just just do observation, observation, and then do like some roughly calculation, uh, on that. So just like okay, like online case selling, uh, for instance. So how are you going to know, uh, your competitors how much they're performing? So usually like Lazada, like Shopee, right? Whenever you look at the sellers, so usually you will see how many product or item been sold already. So of course you will, when you ask the seller how how many that you go, you are uh, you already uh, uh, sell the product. So of course they will not okay, share. So you look on the product and then look how much of the product and then please okay cross check, basically how much the cost of the product. So you need to cross check with others okay sources. All right, so maybe you can check. Okay, mostly this product from China, you can check. Okay, from Taobao or Ta AliExpress, for instance, if you get in the large quantity, how much that you can get? Okay, uh, so I know because some of my friends are doing okay, the online business, so they get from the AliExpress and Taobao, even though they don't speak okay, Chinese, right? My friend mostly like Malay do, do this business. I say, how you buy this thing? So they say, uh, ikut nasib lah. So depend on lah lah because uh, they don't understand okay, what is written. And then like, sometimes they, they copy and paste and translate it. Okay? <laughs> and then buy the, the product in large quantity. So when buy in large quantity, okay, they, they surely okay, very uh, less. So when you compare okay, the, the actual price and then the selling price. okay, And then you look on the sold units. How many sold already? Then you can uh, determine uh, how much okay, they are their Profit margin, okay, already. Uh, that's good, okay, already. Okay, I don't expect you know, okay, how much the expenditure, how much or 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 the 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 workers payment or all this. If you can get, okay, it's much better. But if you can get, okay, how much, okay, their their estimation or, or their 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 sales, okay, is actually good, okay, as well. So don't uh, be afraid, uh, or don't be um upset if you cannot get hundred percent of the information of your similar businesses or your competitors so you can do first okay like uh like uh, intellectual okay um guessing okay of course you need like cross check okay and then estimate and then by the observation so any any means as long as you can get the in information ethical ways lah, okay so i hope you clear uh on that all right and then uh we also have this 
uh, overall financial okay attractiveness all right so I need to check the second link so make sure it's not uh, disconnected overall financial okay attractiveness so we are looking on another financial factors that are associated with the uh, startup uh, business so what we can look on the overall financial attractiveness okay basically is this right so apart than uh, having a good sales profitability where uh, whether you can have the information to forecast uh, your business okay for long term five years seven years to ten years clearly so that's why um, if you can get uh, info from your competitors and also your from your similar business it's actually good but if you can't get okay so what to do so that's a limitation that you are facing but of course you have determination perseverance in order for you to do the business so that's why uh, why the the chair moving okay i'm getting excited when <laughs> so that's why okay uh that's what makes you different compared to the normal people normal people uh normal person okay that not having interest to do the business when they face this kind of thing they absolutely give up they do not want to do already because they say okay it's very very tedious job but you you still want to do it because you believe in whatever you are doing right so no worry if you cannot get okay, all the information because after all when you do do business okay limitation is always there definitely all right and of course okay a high percentage of re revenue that, that i mentioned you just now profitability able to forecast okay uh the income and expenses okay with reasonable degree of uncertainty internally generated fund okay to finance and to sustain so of course the total startup money just now so if you have uh, sufficient amount of money just now like instead of having 11,000 1,000 will do and some more uh, Winnie have extra 4,000 so it will be like very attractive for her to do the business okay maybe for for the first year second years before okay, she start to grow the business more somehow and of course the exit opportunity so whenever you do the business unless if you are doing alone uh, I think that's fine but when you are doing with the team members so you have to make sure the agreement is there between you and your uh, and other team members or business partners because when it comes to the money uh, it's very very uh, sensitive for everyone uh, of us i don't say okay like like you guys even like myself so i'm very sensitive when, when it comes to the money okay i don't say like worrying i'm very sensitive when it comes to the money we talk about the business deal money so it's very very okay sensitive so you need to have black and white so what you can do what you cannot do so how long that you need to stay in the uh, in the ventures for your information because like sometimes uh when you have disagreement maybe like right now you are very close with your team members but later on we do not know in the future we cannot predict in the future all right unless if you're low-key uh. <laughs> low if you watch okay low-key uh, that, that's different thing okay you can reset the time all those things but we cannot do that so if you we cannot do that we do not know in two years time maybe your friendship with your team member will be over because it's due to disagreement but because you don't have the agreement uh, that will be your big issue big problem so that's why you need to have the the black and white the founders agreement that we're going to um, discuss later in chapters uh, seven under ethics and legal foundation because why because like sometimes okay uh, even though you have the agreement so it might look very fair in the beginning but later on when you read it properly it is actually not fair okay, to you so i give you like example so let's say like uh when you are doing the business with your team members okay let's say five of you doing the business okay so you are really close to one another even though you are going to withdraw from the company also you still don't have issue with your friends okay actually but somehow because you do not have the interest to do the business anymore okay so you do not some people when they do not have the interest uh, to do the business anymore they want to withdraw but of course you look at the agreement says the agreement says okay in the beginning uh, you are not allowed to sell your shares or your business interest to external party means that to the outsiders okay so it looks fair because it says that you are required to sell among the shares holder the team members inside the company okay does it look fair it look fair right because why because okay the agreement say you're not allowed to sell to to all of all of you uh, to to external people to the third party outsiders but you are allowed to sell among four of them but let's say four of them do not want to buy your share so what will happen you still cannot withdraw from the company 
But let's say if like four of your friends uh, would like to take advantage towards you because you really want to have the money. So let's say you want to have the money. So you want to uh, withdraw all your interest inside the company. So you are selling your share. So let's say your share is worth 1 million ringgit. But because you are desperately want to have the money, so let's say four of them, of your team members, the other shares, so they say, yes, we will buy your share, but we cannot buy at 1 million. So maybe we buy at 500,000. So what you can do? You have no choice. You cannot sell to outsiders, but you cannot sell 1 million to among the shares holder, among your, your team members, but you just can sell 500,000. No choice already. So in the end, you forego your, your share that worth 1 million to 500,000 only under value okay so that's why okay you need to check properly on the agreement so even though it has the agreement it might look fair but somehow it has like uh the trickier insight uh on it okay so i hope okay, you clear uh, with that because i have uh, faced uh, a lot of, of things uh like agreement uh, this when i was uh, like younger so i made mistake uh last time when i did like some investment uh not much like fifty thousand ringgit uh but Whenever I want to withdraw from the company, uh, they say I can withdraw at any time. But when I look back uh, the agreement, uh, no, look back the, when I mentioned to them that I want to withdraw back, so they say they want they just want to pay thirty percent from my uh, initial investment. Okay, I say why thirty percent? They they say okay, look back at the at the agreement. Yes, it says I can withdraw, but before the stipulated time, which is ten years. So this is the, the 10 years uh, actually, 2011. So I invested in 2011. So December 2021 uh, will be the last date uh, of the agreement. So they say uh, within the, uh, before the stipulated time, uh, the company only give uh, 30%. Okay, so from 50,000, you know, 50,000, <laughs> 30% only, right? Around like 15,000 ringgit 10 years ago, all right? Uh, because the company is not making any like money, no return, so I want to withdraw my my investment. Uh, but somehow I just been noticed that uh the company is already like bankrupt, uh, so I do not know what happened with my money <laughs> already. So please, okay, read properly on the agreement. So I think I just uh, have to say that uh the fifty thousand is gone already, lah. Okay. <laughs> Even though this is the last year, the 10 years okay, of the agreement. Okay, so if I get the money, that, that will be like my bonus. Uh. If I don't get, uh, I don't say I don't mind, but of course, I already like set in mind, the money actually already gone. So I don't have the heart pain uh, already. All right, so I hope okay, you clear uh, with this uh, explanation all right, on the financial uh, uh, overall financial attractiveness of proposed business, uh, uh, financial performance of similar business, and also uh, total uh, startup uh, money. All right, so um, I think we stop it uh, today. Uh, so I managed to stop it, okay, uh, even though I dragged a little bit time, about 15 minutes. Uh, so this uh, uh, session, I will record, I will share it uh, in the YouTube uh, channel uh, later because it's uh, much comprehensive compared to my previous uh, recording. Uh, so please bear in mind that uh, that I'm asking uh, you guys permission for me to record this session uh, because okay I cannot like simply uh, record it without your consent. So I need to get your consent okay as well and share it in my YouTube channel. All right. So thank you uh, so much uh, for uh, your time. Uh, have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Thank you and I love you all. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, don't forget to scan yeah, your, your attendance. Yeah? So if you have any problem with your uh, scanner, yeah, please uh, let me know yeah, in the first place. And please provide uh, <laughs> the, the attendance, uh, uh, the, the screenshot okay, to me okay, as well. All right, thank you so much and have a nice day.